right, guys. So let's go over how I would approach setting up a project for mixing and why it's important to put some thought into how you're setting up your mixing project. So what I recommend is even for people that are just starting to get into mixing, just in the sense of making sure that your CPU is not abused with all the different plugins that you still have inside of your actual production project, of course, and just to get a cleaner overview of what the sound actually does to maybe cut out a reverb tails or certain different things, I recommend to just go ahead and stem things out. This can be done in a multitude of ways. If you've got a full project, you can basically just go ahead and go to File, Export Audio, and then over here, go to All Individual Tracks. Of course, I don't really have many tracks here to select, but of course, if you're very organized, this is the preferred option, and this will make it a lot easier for you to basically import your 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 stems. And one other thing to note as well, if you haven't already, I recommend for you to go into your warp launch and record settings and turning off auto warp long samples. This is going to make your life a lot easier when importing any forms of stems and so forth. So let's go ahead and import these stems right here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag them in and make sure that I press command. And this is going to take a second to load up. And I'm already going to start organizing things while this starts loading up in the way that I like it. So I like having my drums up top. Like that. Then I like having my effects right at the bottom. And this is different for every person, but I actually feel like that this makes a lot of sense for the most part in terms of mixing, that you basically start at the top. So I always like imagining mixing in the box as mixing on an analog console. And that would, for me, be that I start with the drums right on the left and then basically move down. So I want to also layer these stems up in the way that I'm planning on approaching to mixing them. So I'm definitely going to start off getting the drums to groove properly and then move down accordingly. And... I've done this this way for years, so that's why this is the preferred method of, of me doing it. And this is a future bass track as well, so EDM is always going to be set up in a very similar way to this as well. All the mixes that I've done. So let me see. We've got the sub stem here. We've got cymbals here, percussion, snare, kick. All right, cool. So let's go into quickly color coding everything. This seems to be pretty on point. Let's just move this up here. And let's go ahead and also group everything. So we're going to call this drums. Again, you can color code these things the way you want to. I'm just going to color code things the way I like to color code stuff and the way it makes most sense to me. So drums, and as you can see, this new feature in Ableton 10 is absolutely great. Assign track color to group tracks and clips. Makes life a lot easier. We only have one bass stem, so that's where we're just going to have this one bass stem. I'm gonna make this blue. We also have only one live instrument, I call them, stem, so we're gonna make that pink. Then we have a few synth stems. And of course, I try to minimize using shortcuts because this will give you guys an easier way of seeing what exactly I'm pressing as well. And boom, right here. And then we just have the vocal. I like making vocals yellow and I like making effects green. Let's do this green. And of course, that, that, that and that so this is a very very basic and this 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 is even before i've done any mixing i haven't even heard the track yet and i'm just setting things up in the way that i know that i want to be setting them up in and after i'm going to listen to after i've listened to everything and you guys are going to listen to things in a second as well then i can decide if i want to say group the kick and snare individually as well to process them a bit differently and 
I'm going to go over the benefits of doing certain things like that in a second if I if I do decide to do that. But beforehand, I'm also going to insert a return tracker too. So these are sends. This is basically going to minimize your CPU load for certain effects. Of course, with using stock plugins, this isn't really that much of an issue. But we're just going to go ahead and load up a simple reverb uh, preset, something which might just be overall a very decent preset to have. So we're just going to go ahead and mess around with something. Again, I'm going to adjust this once I actually listen to things. I'm just going to set this up to what I think will probably work best for something like a future house base, future base track or something of that sort. Maybe if I want to put that on a different, or, or if I want to put that on a synth or something. And I'm also going to set up a very basic delay. Let me go ahead and use echo. We can also go ahead and select a little preset. I like this preset right here. And I like dotted eighth a lot. So we're just going to go ahead and adjust that a bit. And notice that I'm using the EQs or filters inside both of these plugins to make sure that I'm cutting out any very, very high material. So especially if I'm working with vocals or something of that nature, I don't like having very high S sounds in reverb because I just think that it sounds very, very weird and can sometimes distort from the whole image. So you've got like all these weird S sounds flying around and we're just going to keep this pretty simple for now. All this ping pong delay and we've got two simple settings set up here. And one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a utility knob here. And I want to take down the gain by maybe 3 dB because I already saw from the waveforms earlier that this is probably going to be a bit loud. And in a second, I'm going to go over tweaking all of this as well. But for now, let's go ahead and listen to the track and then make some decisions based on that as well. I'm just going to turn up the volume for a second here so you guys can hear everything properly. So yeah, as we can see, we're going to have to do quite a bit of mixing here, but that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and listen to the kick and snare just by itself. I don't think that I want to be grouping these together in this instant, but I still might change my mind later on. Let's go ahead and listen to the chord synth. So I might want to try and apply some reverb down the line. And notice how while I'm going through all of these stems, I'm just making myself basic mental notes of the track in a sense already. This is going to make everything for me a bit easier when approaching things and keeping things in mind as well when I work on the individual sounds as well to try and achieve a certain sound. This is something which is going to be really important for you guys when you're listening to a song or your own song for that matter and in this kind of detail and i recommend doing this with as fresh ears as possible if you've just worked on your track for six hours and you just exported your stems and you want to hop into mixing right away you know maybe take a day or two off and sleep on it and then come back later after listening to a lot of other music as well to kind of refresh your ears on the whole situation so you can come into mixing with unbiased ears in a sense right 
and I'm also going to go ahead and basically decide now what I might want to reduce in volume later on. The next video is going to be all about gain staging, so where I'm going to just achieve as much with gain staging as I possibly can, which means just changing the volume right here and making a few mental notes. I noticed that the kick is very, very present and loud. The drums in general are going to need a lot of work. I also want this chord to be a bit louder as well. So just a few little mental notes there as well. And we're going to go hop right into the gain staging right now. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. 